Today, we are poised at the end of one liturgical year and the beginning of another. And the Gospel, which you just heard proclaimed on this last Sunday after Pentecost, is a grave and even frightening reminder, particularly in our times when so many of those signs are uh, perhaps uh, present to us. This is a frightening reminder that God intends to bring time itself to an end and that he will come again to judge all men on the basis of their lives, their actions, their moral choices, their fidelity or lack thereof to him. The prayer which opened today's Mass reflects this theme Excita quesmus domine tuorum fidelium voluntates. Stir up, O Lord, we beseech thee, the wills of thy faithful people. Beloved, this is the perennial cry of Holy Church on behalf of humanity that God should mercifully come to us now, in time, with the help of his grace. And this cry is directed to the same God who is assuredly going to come again at the consummation of the ages and neither in mercy nor love that time but in a severe and exacting judgment of each human being and his individual moral dispositions. Now, the fearsome quality of the Second Coming, the Great Second Coming, is tempered and rendered comprehensible by its intimate relationship to the Lord's first advent to this world. Next week, the liturgical year begins anew. The rehearsal of God's mystical and saving work in the magnificent cosmos he has so lovingly created and set man into, once again, will be set before our hearts. The season of Advent will open with another great collect, excita. Excita quesmus domine potentiam tua et veni. Stir up, O Lord, thy power and come. This week we beg him to stir up our wills so that we might go to him and next week that he might stir up himself and come into this world. <clears throat> this juncture in the calendar therefore marks both the end and the beginning of our life in grace. What is more these two Sundays are separated always by an entire year while falling together without fail. In a similar way, the mysteries of our faith may be separated for examination and learning while, in fact, the reality of the Christian life and religion is but a single fabric. Now we walk in time, but God, in whom we live and move and have our being, encompasses all things, rather, in a singular, incomprehensible instant of infinite, timeless love, mercy, and justice. And it is to him, that is to say, fidelity to him and his teaching, that we are called, and for which we will certainly be called to give an account at the judgment in his dreadful second advent. The junction of the old and the new year this Sunday and next gives us occasion to reflect on the breadth of our Christian Catholic faith, its unfathomable richness, the limitless power of its capacity for transforming our broken lives, and its clarion call to repentance of sin committed not only our own, but to do penance for those who do not. For this religion is like none other. It has sprung from the heart of God himself, creator of all things, and it is his work in us, 
It is not of our own creation. It is not of our own doing. The apostolic Catholic Christian faith has been given by God through the revelation of Jesus Christ to the end that we might be transformed from death unto life, that we might become more and more conformed to that likeness of God in whose image we have all been created. Every Sunday throughout the Pentecost season, the Church has intoned in its concise and magnificent Latin the preface of the Most Holy Trinity. Man can never have learned of the triune nature of God by the power of natural reason alone. Rather, it required that the Father reveal to us regarding himself the nature of his own being. And so in time, he sent his own Son into this world, and the Church Catholic alone repeats his teaching without abridgment and without shame. The infinite God, the all-perfect, all-knowing, all-seeing, one and living deity, that source of all light and life, is of one divine substance, itself at once a community of three persons, indwelling, equal, yet distinct. At a specific moment in time, the second person of this divine trinity descended into this world of nature, which God created, extrinsic to himself. Jesus Christ is none other than the eternal wisdom of God himself, born into our very flesh. And the reason for which the Lord Jesus, God, has come to us as one of us is so that we creatures made in his image but now corrupted by sin and subject to death might be transformed into his likeness and brought to eternal safe harbor with him in glory, there to remain forever and ever. And so, beloved, the question we must ask ourselves daily, indeed, moment by moment each day, is will we be found faithful to his divine love on the day of his divine judgment? Christianity without reference to sin and judgment is a fraud. It is de fide, it is of the faith, it is necessary that the clergy preach on the subject, it is necessary that you believe it. Excita quesmus domine potentiam tuam et veni, and that is why we pray this. Stir up, we beseech thee, O Lord, and come, so that we might deserve by thy protection to be rescued from the threatening dangers of our sins. We call upon God, who knows what our needs already are, but he wills that we will what he wills. And we call upon him to save us, firstly from ourselves. The Lord who came once in time, born of gentle Mary and laid in a manger, indeed came for a gratuitous love of us poor sinners to effect our redemption. And this same Lord also comes to us day by day in time through the presence and ministry of his church. He comes there through grace, the principal channels of which are the divine sacraments or mysteries of our faith. This present coming is indispensable to us for reason of the changeableness of our living in time and temptation. We are never the same, not even at the same hour each day are we the same. We are in constant flux, we are wounded, we are children, alas, of perdition and sin. God has changed that 
if we add to our lives the conformity of our will to him. And so, beloved, in this present liturgical year, which is drawing to a close while another dawns anew, let us turn our hearts yet again with confidence, filial trust towards him from whom all goodness comes. Let us live and let us love as did his mother Mary, with purity of heart, that is, hearts undivided in the reaching towards him, with salutary fear for the allurements of this world which we should put off, <clears throat> and fear of the exacting judgment which most certainly awaits each one of us at the moment of death, at the second coming, at the great judgment of all the cosmos. <clears throat> Let us turn back to God with a complete surrender of our wills and our bodies to his salutary, gracious, good, and loving direction. This we can do under the impulse of grace by a humble and following, confident following of the Lord Jesus. If we would turn our hearts more and more to him, if we would but give our lives to God without hesitation or compromise, if we would just turn our backs on the passing things of this world which so obsess us, his grace would form us ever more perfectly to his own divine image. Our many and seemingly endless sufferings would find their divine sense and resolution in the abyss of his providential love, and we would be ever more perfected unto that image in which we have been created. If we would love others in this way, because they too are made in his image and are our brothers on the road towards eternity, then, beloved, we will have nothing to fear when Christ comes again as our most just judge. Let us, therefore, on this last Sunday of the year, as we look to begin another next week, let us walk worthily of God and praise him in all things, as the Apostle Paul bids us to do in today's reading to the Colossians. May our every action be strengthened by Christ unto perfection and long-suffering, so that in time we may uh, come to behold him forever face to face in the endless joy which is heaven. It is for this, beloved, that we have been created, and it is for this that Christ has been incarnate, why he lived, why he died, why he rose, and why he reigns living in glory. And it is in view of all this that we will stand truly humble when he shall surely come again to judge the living and the dead. Please rise. Pray in the